We're given a cubic polynomial f of x with two unknown coefficients p and q, and we're told that f of x is such that x plus 3 is a factor, and the remainder upon division by x plus 1 is negative 80. We're then asked to find the values of the unknown coefficients p and q. Well, to do that, I'll start by moving this to the side. There we go. Since we need to find two unknowns, p and q, we're going to need to derive two equations. And for each of those two equations, we'll use one of the two bits of information we're given. So let's go ahead and look at this first bit of information, the fact that x plus 3 is a factor. Well, since x plus 3 is a factor, so I'll just write that, x plus 3 is a factor, factor, the factor theorem, factor theorem, allows us to state, so I'll just write implies here, that f of negative 3 equals to 0. Now, since we know that f of negative 3 has to equal to 0, if we replace every x we see inside f of x by negative 3, we'll obtain our first equation involving the two unknowns, p and q. Here's what I mean. Using the function I have here, I can write that f of negative 3 equals to 2 times negative 3 cubed plus p times negative 3 squared plus q times negative 3 minus 120. Now, using the fact that negative 3 in parentheses cubed is equal to negative 27, and the fact that negative 3 in parentheses squared is equal to 9, this turns into negative 54 plus 9p minus 3q minus 120. And gathering like terms, we can state that f of negative 3 equals to 9p minus 3q minus 174. Now, using the fact that f of negative 3 has to be equal to 0, this turns into 0 equals to 9p minus 3q minus 174, and rearranging that we find 9p minus 3q equals to 174. And as such, we now have our first equation involving p and q. But looking at this equation, I notice that 9, negative 3, and 174 are all multiples of 3. So if I divide throughout by 3, it leads to 3p minus q equals to 58. And that's my first equation involving the unknowns p and q. And in fact, I'll give it a name. I'll call it e1. I move on to the second bit of information. And that was that the remainder upon division by x plus 1 is negative 80. And if I just write that as well, the remainder, remainder, of f of x divided by x plus 1 equals to negative 80. Now in this case, the remainder theorem, so I'll write that as well, remainder theorem, theorem, there we go, tells us that f of negative 1 has to be equal to negative 80. And in turn, this result tells us that if we replace every x we see inside f of x by negative 1, the result has to equal to negative 80. And that should lead to our second equation involving p and q. So let's go ahead. f of negative 1 will equal to 2 times negative 1 cubed plus p times negative 1 squared plus q times negative 1 minus 120. Now, using the fact that negative 1 in parentheses cubed is negative 1, and negative 1 in parentheses squared is 1, this becomes negative 2 plus p minus q minus 120. Finally, gathering like terms, we can state that f of negative 1 equals to p minus q minus 122. Now, using the fact that f of negative 1 has to be equal to negative 80, this becomes negative 80 equals to p minus q minus 122, and rearranging this, we quickly find that p minus q equals to 42. And that's our second equation involving the two unknowns, p and q. And I'll give it a name, I'll call it e2. There we go. At this stage, we've used the two bits of information given in the question, and we now have two equations involving the two unknowns we're after, p and q. All we have to do now is solve these two equations simultaneously. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just copy the equations. Those are 3p minus q 
equals to 58, that's equation 1, E1, and P minus Q equals to 42, that's equation 2. Looking at these two equations, we quickly see that if we were to subtract one equation from the other, then we would eliminate the unknown Q. So I'll go ahead and subtract E2 from E1. And in fact, I'll just write that. So we're finding E1 minus E2. Okay, so we'll have 3P minus P, which is 2P minus Q minus negative Q, which turns into minus Q plus Q, which is zero. So we don't need to write anything there. And that's equal to 58 minus 42, which is 16. Now, dividing both sides of this equation by 2, we quickly find that the coefficient p is equal to 8. And that's one of the coefficients found. To find the other coefficient, we can use either one of these two equations, e1 or e2, and replace p by the result we just found. So let's see, I'll go ahead and use the second equation, e2, and replacing p by 8, e2 becomes, so I'll just write e2, two dots, 8 minus q equals to 42. That leads us to negative q equals to 34, which leads us to q equals to negative 34. And we now have the two unknown coefficients, p and q. Now, although we could stop there, I always like to finish by writing the function we were given, replacing the unknown coefficients by the results I found. So in this case, my final answer would be that f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 34x minus 120. And that's the final answer.